from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Mirantis Launchpad 2020. Brought to you by Mirantis. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of Mirantis Launchpad 2020. Big event, multiple tracks, powered by theCUBE 365. Happy to welcome to the program. We have a first time guest, Willem Duplessis. He is the Director of Customer Success and Operations with Mirantis. Willem, thanks so much for joining us. Hi Stu, thanks for having me. So, uh, you know, customer success, of course, uh, you know, big topic in the industry last few years. You know, CX uh, is so important, employee success, uh, and enabling that. But what, give us a little bit, you know, your background and, and the purview that you, that you and your team cover. Exactly. Yeah. So everything um, under my umbrella would be would be basically post sales, um, the whole customer experience after you know the the point of uh, a sale has been made. So the whole account management thereafter, the, the the success of the account, as well as the health of the account thereafter. That'll be anything basically post sales be under my umbrella. Wonderful. Well, uh, the the big piece is the shift, as we know. You know, software went from shrink wrapped. Uh, you know, and hardware talking about CapEx to the cloud really ushered in OpEx. We're talking much more subscription, managed services and the like. So uh, Mirantis has subscription offering. Why don't you lay out uh, for us uh, the, the, the new pieces of this and how Mirantis uh, puts together its offerings? Yeah, absolutely. So with the launch of our new product, uh, Docker Enterprise Container Cloud, we're making two subscriptions available as well, uh, um, named ProdCare, which is a 24-7 a mission critical support offering and uh, Opscare being a, a fully managed platform as a service uh, um, subscription. Now these, these offerings have been available on the Mirantis Cloud platform side of, the, of, of, our, of our business for quite some time. We've been very successful with them. So it's really excited making them available to our Docker Enterprise customers. Um, so what, we, what we're trying to achieve with these accounts, are, are with, the, with these uh, subscriptions rather, are, you know, 30% uh, of the, the Fortune 100 companies are Mirantis um, uh, customers. So we will work on a day-to-day -day basis with them with their container and Kubernetes initiatives. So when we speak to these customers, there are really two trends that are, that are uh, becoming very clear. The first being the requirements of, of um, service providers or, or vendors being, uh, being able to provide a true 24-7 experience. What I mean by that is, it's not the ability to just react to a, an incident on a 24-7 basis. That's what I mean. What I mean is, is all of these companies would have operation centers spread across the globe. So it is at every hour of the day, it would be business as usual. And what, the, what these companies require is a, a, a partner or a, a service provider that can match that level, that, that way of, of, of operating. Um, that is the, the first uh, trend that we're noticing. The second piece is, is, is really the, the evolution of the, of the, the dev environment. Um, the dev environment is, is no longer really seen as a, a secondary um, um, or a, a lower class citizen, if you want to call it. It's really become part of the, of the whole DevOps pipeline. So, it is, it is really part of a mission critical process. So that what, what customers, what we hear from our customers is that they require a, a real enterprise grade um, subscription that they can cover this whole pipeline under and, and um, um, you know, have the same quality of service from whether that is a dev or a production environment. So if you have a failure on, um, on, on your dev environment and your, your developer cannot push code, that is, is, is the same level of criticality than there would, then there would be on if the failure was on the production environment. So this whole pipeline is decided to be seen as a mission critical component. And that's, a gri that's really where, where prod care comes in. It is really this 24 seven mission critical, follow the sun, um, um, enter enterprise grade subscription that, that provides our customers with enhanced SLAs that, uh, like I said, we've been running on the, on the Mirantis cloud platform side for quite some time. We've had, we've had some significant success with uh, some really large companies. Um, the second offering that, that we're making available, with, uh, like I said, is Opscare. Now, Opscare is a, an ITIL-based managed service um, subscription where we provide a platform as a service experience to a customer 
um, on their infrastructure of choice. So it is really irrelevant for us what your infrastructure is, whether that is on-prem or in the public cloud. Um, as long as the product can, can support the, the infrastructure, you know, the subscription would be available for you and the experience would be, would be very much the same. So what, what Opske, like I said, entails is, is, is this whole ITIL framework that would include, you know, the, the monitoring and managing of your alerts, the, the incident management process, the problem management process, as well as change management that would include the life cycle management of, of, the, of the whole environment. And that would just in, enable our customers to run on the latest and greatest of, uh, of, of our, our product at all times. Um, and same as with, with Prodcare, that's been available for our um, Rantus Cloud Platform customers for quite a while and have seen some significant success with that as well. Well, well, well um, we definitely have seen that 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 growth of the managed care offerings, like you're you're talking about with Ops Care. Uh, you know, shift left is so important for companies to be able to focus on what's critically important. As you said, developers need to be enabled. It can't just be you know waiting for things or or be uh, you know relegated uh, to, to you know have to wait in line or, or use something that that's not optimal. Uh, what what are some of those outcomes? You know, what can companies do that they weren't able before? What are some of the successes uh, that that you're seeing with the, the managed care? Ops, ops care solution yeah so the the real way where ops care really become comes comes to its own is is allowing the customer ability to focus on what is important to their business and spend less time on on uh, what we call keep the lights on what i mean by that is they, they they're, they're solely focused on developing the application uh developing the workload and spend basically no time on on managing the infrastructure and uh, uh, um, you know maintaining it or um, you know providing you know whatever do do whatever to to keep the platform stable because that is done by Marantis already. So for example, if we take 2020 year to date, all the platforms running under uh, Opscare has an availability number of above four nines, and that is a significant number. Uh, you know, so that really just sets such a strong foundation for a customer to 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 just have that sole focus on on what is important to them, um, and and you know just sets that foundation for them to to develop their their workload, to develop their business, and and, and achieve their goals. Well, um, what what about when it comes to the the managing and monitoring of the environment? What kind of metrics are your customers having? You know, help us understand what the customer still does themselves or the reporting they're getting, uh, and, mm -hmm. and what Morantis. I'm assuming there's there, there's probably a TAM involved uh, for, for at least some of the larger accounts there. Uh, help us understand that uh, that shared responsibility, if you were would for uh, uh, these type of environments. Yeah, exactly. So the whole um, ITIL framework, as I explained earlier, you know, incident management, problem management, change management, all of that, this is wrapped around by a customer success manager that is, uh, you know, brings a, a, a single uh, level of ownership or an accountability and, and just have a customer direct for a single point of contact um, as a business partner. So obviously all our customers, the, the, the primary um, KPI or, or, S, or metric that we look at is just the availability of the of the of the the, the platform. That is the primary SLA, and thereafter all of the other things happening. You know, the, the success of the workload and so on, because there's a lot of things that 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 um, makes the result of the workload, not just the platform or the infrastructure, it's the quality of the workload and so on, so on and so forth. But the main metric our customer would be looking at is that availability number, you know, how available and how stable and accessible is the environment. And, you know, like I said, just removing that, that requirement for them to spend basically no time on the, on the platform or the infrastructure, just focusing on the workload. Yeah, when it comes to uh, in the field, uh, your field, uh, your your partners, uh, that that line between prod care and ops care, uh, obviously the, the the trend is going towards uh, you know the the fully managed options. But what, what guidance do you have out there, or what trends do you seeing? Are there is there a certain size company company that tends to be trending that way? Are there certain verticals uh, that that maybe are further ahead? Uh, what, what's the reality today? What do you expect to see over the next kind of six twelve months? Yeah, so most of the companies that we we see that is that is that is engaging with us on a, an ops care or managed service engagement, you know, they have the ambitions to 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 go down the bot model and build operate transfer. 
um, you know, to, to take the operations over themselves at some point. And we have that, that, that option available to them if they wish to choose it further along the line. What we do find is, is that, they, that they don't really um, um, you know, exercise that later on. It is, we, we do find it is, it is such a smooth integration with our customers that, that they tend to stay on OpsCare and see the value that this is actually a, a, a money saver for them, that they, they, they can just focus their efforts on, on building, um, you know, focusing their, their time on the, on the workload on top of the platform. From a vertical perspective, it's really anything and everything. We, we have customers in the science and research. We have telcos, large um, manufacturing, manufacturing and large, large organizations. Really, a, the breadth of the verticals that we that we see that are utilizing upscale and not even to mention prodcare. That's really everything in there as well. So, it is not a, a really an, a subscription that is that is custom for one vertical. It is basically something that uh, we that we that any vertical can actually utilize and, and find a significant amount of value in. All right, well, what, what final words do you have uh, for, that you want to leave everyone with today? Yeah, so over the last six to nine months, you know, they've, uh, we've, we've invested a significant amount of resources in, in the Docker Enterprise um, uh, uh, support business. And we just with one one focus, and that is just to take the support business to the next level and improve and or or give the customers an, an optimal customer experience. So with the availability of, of these new subscriptions, I'm really excited to to engage with our Docker Enterprise customers with these new enhanced SLAs and and and, and just be able to work with them on, on these um, like I said, enhanced um, subscriptions and just see uh, just have a, have, give them a better customer experience. So I'm really looking forward to work, working with them on these subscriptions. Well, and thank you so much for all the updates and want to welcome everyone to be sure to check out all the rest of the tracks on the Launchpad 2020 event. I'm Stu Miniman and thank you for watching theCUBE.